life is so brief for you to go around being miserable. This skill and this practice of self-awareness is going to save you so much time being miserable. Hi my darlings and welcome to another video and in today's video like you can already tell by the title we're going to be looking into what self-awareness is and how you can develop more self-awareness in your life and basically the benefits that come with being a very self-aware person I consider myself to be really self-aware hence why I feel a little bit qualified to teach this video this is a skill that I have been able to cultivate in my life and that has really helped me to progress in my self-growth, self-development, leveling up journey, whatever you want to call it. This is a life skill and I cannot wait to teach you how to cultivate it. So to begin, um, I googled the definition of self-awareness just so we have a foundation on which to work with. So if you see me looking down, it's because I have my little planner down here and my points jetted out. So that's what I'm looking at, okay? So according to Marion Webster Dictionary, self-awareness is basically awareness of one's own personality and individuality. So I went ahead to also look up the definition of awareness. And it basically said that awareness is knowledge or understanding that something is happening or something exists. Now, if you put two and two together, the definition of self-awareness and the definition of awareness, we can easily conclude that self-awareness is basically a knowledge and understanding of one's own personality and one's own individuality. It's basically a knowledge of what is happening in your life, understanding yourself, understanding your uniqueness and your individuality. Based on my own definition of self-awareness, self-awareness is basically honesty with one's self is being honest with who you are what you like what is happening in your life how you feel and so on so i'm gonna be sharing with you the benefits of being self-aware and later on in the video how you can become a more self-aware person the first benefit is the fact that it increases your level of self-love. I realized that in my journey and in, like as I started becoming more self-aware and cultivating this skill or lifestyle, I realized that a lot of the things I used to judge myself for and how hard I used to be on myself, all, a lot of these things diminished because I entered into a new level of understanding about myself, about my current situation, about my past, and about how everything basically affects my present. When you know why you're doing something and what the root cause of whatever it is you're currently doing is, it's harder for you to be very judgmental because you understand yourself and therefore it's easier for you to show love to yourself. Which leads me to my second point that self-awareness also increases your level of understanding both for yourself and for others because like I said you're able to become more introspective and less judgmental about yourself. So if you're less judgmental about yourself naturally it's going to spill out on other people on your relationships because you cannot love yourself and hate other people also self-awareness helps you to be more productive and to have like a better performance at work in school because when you are self-aware you're able to identify for example why you're procrastinating or why you're being lazy or why you're not doing as good as you should be doing because you're able to self-reflect you're able to look at yourself objectively and say okay this is the reason another benefit of self-awareness is the fact that it increases your mood i used to have really bad mood swings you guys but now that i'm self-aware i'm able to like stop a bad thought even before it gets the chance to make me sad can you hear the water pouring outside i'm really sorry i don't know what's going on but we're going to keep moving now we're going to go into how to develop self-awareness in your life like i mentioned earlier self-awareness is simply being honest with yourself and this is the very first step to developing self-awareness you have to tell yourself the truth about everything about anything about how you're feeling at any given point you cannot lie to yourself the first step to developing self-awareness in your life is to be honest with yourself so, for example, if you catch yourself being sad about whatever, you need to be able to pause yourself and ask yourself, okay, why am I feeling this way? 
and then truthfully answer your question and which is just the second point honestly the second step towards being more self-aware ask yourself questions objectively what who why when you know when did my mood change what was the last thing i was thinking about who am i thinking about right now that's making me sad why am i feeling this way ask yourself objective questions and then tie in the first point of always being honest with yourself and answer those questions honestly the next step that you can take towards becoming a more self-aware person is to pay attention to your thoughts I think it's Joyce Meyer that says, think about what you're thinking about. And it stands so true. When, when I started doing that, yo, I really just noticed a, ch a big change in my level of happiness and contentment with my life. And so basically thinking about what you're thinking about is really simple. You know, your mind just wanders sometimes. You can be in a really good mood and then all of a sudden you think about some practical example. I don't like short hair. Like, I don't like short braids. Usually when I do braids, they're long, like long, long. But my school, like the way my university works, we're not allowed to have braids past a certain length. So I remember like, I was actually feeling my braids because they're actually quite cute, you know? Not my style, but like they're cute. And then I remember going online and I saw this girl with like really long braids and she was looking fine. And I knew those braids would look good on me. Instantly, my mood switched. I started to compare myself to her and I got really sad. Like more like irritated sad like this dumb school like why do i even have to abide by these stupid rules like i started feeling really bad and because one of like my values are having peace is having peace of mind i had to stop myself like yo what is all this negativity where is it coming from as i thought about what i had been thinking about before my mood switched i literally paused myself and i was like okay when last was I happy? I identified, okay, when I came back from the kitchen and I sat down on my bed and I was going through Instagram. Okay, so now what did I see on Instagram that, that changed my mood? Oh, I saw the really pretty brown girl with her long, beautiful braids and it made me feel sad. Why did it make me feel sad? Oh, because my braids are short and I can't do nothing about my braids right now. Boom, problem solved. Now I know when my mood changed, why it changed and how I'm feeling, okay? So the next step is what to do about it. What did I do about it? I decided, you know what? I went to the mirror, I took my phone out and I took some pictures and I looked so good. Life is so brief for you to go around being miserable. This skill and this practice of self-awareness is gonna save you so much time being miserable. Honestly, if it was before, I could have spent the whole day feeling sad and not even, and like the thing about sadness is that it always spirals down into something else. It creates more negativity. Before you know it, there's this huge cloud of darkness and anger hanging over your head and you're wondering, where did this even come from? I was happy like two hours ago, you know? So I was able to tackle that problem right there and there. I took my pictures, I looked pretty and I was fine. Ask yourself these questions, answer honestly, answer objectively. Once you have realized the problem, look for a solution to it. So the next point to developing self-awareness is to be selective about the kind of thoughts you entertain in your mind, about yourself, about your situation. Be very selective, honestly, because on your journey towards self-awareness, you're going to realize a lot of negative perceptions you have about yourself. You're digging deep into those closets and have been closed for ages that have cobwebs and skeletons in them. You're literally digging out those cobwebs and skeletons. So in this journey of self-awareness and in this practice of developing self-awareness, you're going to uncover lots of thoughts that are negative about yourself. And I believe the right way to do it is to recognize that you have these thoughts about yourself, but do not dwell on them. Look for constructive ways to replace these thoughts with new ones, with ones that will better your life and your situation. So a practical example could be, oh my gosh, I'm not pretty or I'm not where I want to be you know maybe that could be true maybe you honestly don't feel like you're pretty or maybe you honestly feel like i have missed so many opportunities in life and i'm not where i'm supposed to be that is a thought but you can decide now that you're a more self-aware person if that thought stays in your life or if you're going to do something to change how you feel about yourself i'm not saying get rid of thoughts i'm saying acknowledge its presence and do something about it because a lot of the times you can't force negative thoughts out of your head you really can't you know you have to gradually change them 
by changing yourself, by becoming a better version of yourself. So for example, with the one of, um, I'm not where I want to be, you can identify, okay, where do I want to be? What can I do to get to where I want to be? And so on. My last tip for you guys today is to practice self-love. Loving yourself is such a game changer. It's, it's such a beautiful thing to realize that you can love yourself. You can live a life where you love and you're happy with yourself. I believe that practicing self-love is one of the greatest ways to increase your level of self-awareness or to to foster it, to boost it, you know? Because the more you love yourself, like what do you do when you fall in love with somebody? When you fall in love with somebody, you want to get to know them, right? You want to spend every moment with them. You want to know everything and more there is to know about this person. So treat yourself like that. Treat yourself with that same level of curiosity and intrigue and desire that, yo, I want to know myself. And so the more you spend time knowing yourself, the more you spend time loving yourself, eventually you become more self-aware. Eventually you become, you get to become that better version of yourself that we are all striving towards becoming. Now, alignment with like loving yourself more is patience. The journey towards becoming a self-aware person is not something that happens overnight. Like any skill, it's practice, practice, practice. You need to constantly practice it. You need to constantly use that skill of self-awareness that you've learned about today to ensure that your life and your relationships and your mood and your confidence and everything about you is getting better. So thank you so much for joining me on today's video. I really hope you loved this video. I really hope that it's helped you to desire at least to be more self-aware as a person i really hope it was instructive as well in what to do to become more self-aware if you have any other questions please feel free to leave them in the comment section below please make sure you hit the subscribe button and turn on your notification bell so you can always know when i have a new video uploaded on my youtube channel and i will see you guys in my very next video Mwah.